Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the last week of August. We are wrapping up the third quarter, ready to start the fourth and last quarter of 2024 next week. All right, let's get this started. Uh, my name is Vito Njero. Let's get it started with a quick promo code that you can use. It's Vito MA24. Make sure you are using this code to deposit. Uh, and this is to get you a double deposit bonus. All right, so this is 100% deposit bonus, and this is valid until the 31st of December 2024. Make sure you use the code when you deposit into your Okta trading accounts. All right, okay, so last week, uh, I think last week main focus is definitely the FOMC meeting minutes and the Jackson Hole Symposium. FOMC meeting minutes came out as dovish as the market wanted it to be. And the Jackson Hole Symposium does not disappoint the market as well. Here are some of the comments coming out from JP. And uh, the cooling and labor market condition is unmistakable. So they obviously noted the increase in unemployment rate it seems unlikely that the labor market will be a source of elevated inflationary pressures anytime soon i.e they are looking at the labor market to be a little bit weak going forward here and they continue this we do not seek or welcome further cooling in labor market conditions and here comes the good part the time has come for policy to adjust the direction of travel is clear and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risk. We will do everything we can to support a strong labor market as we make further progress towards price stability. So we are looking at a confirmation of a pivot from the FOMC, from that of monetary tightening to that of losing the monetary policy uh, that we're looking at here to give the labor market a little bit of a jolt back to life. All right, so this kind of pivots everything we are looking at the fomc saying all right the inflation is still under control that's within range and we're not looking at the labor market to continue to push inflation up so cost plus inflation is likely going to go down going forward into the future and they are going to be a little bit more focused on balancing the labor market which has taken a little bit of a hit with the unemployment rate continuing to go up and we also had that revision from the nfp the annual revision that was released last week as well so I think it's safe to say that we have that confirmation going forward. They are going to be looking at interest rate cuts, i.e. September is definitely going to be a live cut from the FOMC. All right. So this week, what's on focus? On focus is going to be the inflation number numbers coming up from Australia, as well as the Eurozone. Obviously, if we talk about the Eurozone, we're going to be looking at German, Spanish, and French preliminary CPI number that's going to be released on Thursday. And then... On Friday, we're going to get a flash estimate of the inflation number coming out from the Eurozone. Obviously, if we take a look at the estimate here, uh, we're looking at a little bit of an increase in terms from, of in, uh, CPI from 2.2% to 2.6%. And we're also looking at GDP numbers from the US. That's also going to be released on Thursday. For Australia, we are also looking at inflation picking up again from 3.4 to 3.8 percent. Now, this is basically the same thing that was actually mentioned by Governor Bailey, uh, which was he was also in the Jackson Hole Symposium, that the fight against inflation it's not over yet. But you know, that's not saying the FOMC doesn't care about inflation, but the FOMC cares more about you know pushing the unemployment rate down a little bit just to stabilize everything in the market doesn't mean that um, they're going to completely ignore inflation number because on their comments there, you know, whether or not they're going to be continuing to cut interest rate depends on the incoming data, which is also meaning data dependent. But uh, I think the market is taking a look at that and say, you know what, data dependent in terms of how big the rate cut is going to be. OK, so uh, I think we have a little bit more stability in the market. And lastly, we have the PCE numbers for this week. Obviously, the PCE numbers is going to be the key trigger for whether or not the market is going to be pricing in a 25 or a 50 basis points cut in September. I think the market right now has already fully priced in for a 25. The 50 basis points cut will probably start to get priced in if the PCE numbers in the U.S. comes in a little bit lower than what the market is expecting. All right, so again, focus for next week. It's um, CPI numbers coming up from Australia, um, the Eurozone, 
GDP numbers coming out from the U.S. That's also going to be on Thursday. A lot of focus is definitely going to be on the weekly unemployment claims, which is also going to be released on Thursday. And then we are going to be looking at the PCE numbers coming out from the U.S. on Friday. All right. Let's just jump into the technicals and take a look on the US dollar here. So we have seen a huge slide on US dollar, obviously breaking below 101 at this point in time. Uh, it is still being, it's still being held up by 150. Uh, we're looking at 100 as the next big number on the US dollar index here. Right now, if we take a look at the US dollar index here, I think the momentum remains to the downside and that's likely going to be the case for the next month. Uh, it's just that in the short time frame, we might anticipate a little bit of a pullback to happen. And one of the few reasons to take note is that 101 level. So the 101 level, uh, we saw that bounce off 101 last week. And then we finally break that 101 level. So right now, the ideal scenario is for the market to actually retest 101. So we're anticipating a little bit of a short-term correction on the US dollar here, uh, but more on that 101 retest as a resistance. But you know, going forward, I think for the dollar index, uh, it's safe to say with how dovish the FOMC is going to be and the anticipated rate cut in the month of September, obviously market is open for 25 up to 50 basis points cut. Uh, safe to say that we are likely going to be heading towards 100 on the dollar index soon, but uh, I prefer to see a little bit of a retest on that 101 level on the US dollar index. All right, next up is gold. And for gold, uh, I think this is pretty clear in terms of what direction is going to be for gold here. Uh, again, not taking a lot into that dovish move from the FOMC. This is actually quite a surprise, probably because this is at an all-time high historical high here. So barrier remains at 127.2%. That's about 2,520 to 2,525. That's basically what the barrier or resistance that needs to be broken. But ultimately, you know, since last week's outlook, we, are, we were looking at more of a push higher here, 2,550 to 2,565 at 161.8%. That's currently in line with the R2 on the weekly pivot. I think that's where gold is likely going to go to. Uh, again, in terms of whether or not that's going to be a short-term correction, I think we have seen that retest of 2,483 on gold here. So uh, I don't expect too much for gold. I think this could stabilize as long as it stabilizes above 2,500. I think we're still going to be looking at buyers coming into the market for gold here. So again, focus, support, 2,500, 2,505. That's where the weekly pivot is going to be. And this is where we want to see price bounces off from in terms of how far it can go. I think this is likely going to punch a new high this week. Uh, ideally, we are looking at a projected move towards 2550 at least on gold here. All right. Next up is the Aussie USD. Now, this is also the other reason why I was anticipating a little bit, a little bit of a potential correction in terms of the US dollar here. Uh, the Aussie USD is currently stuck at 68 cents. Now, this is in line with what we were anticipating last week, the range to be 67 to 68. And that's basically what we got last week. So right now, it is currently testing 68 cents. And obviously, any rejection at 68 cents, that's could, that could actually send uh, the Aussie USD down a little bit. Now, in terms of is it going to reverse the trend? I don't think it's actually going to reverse the trend, but I think it, we are likely to see more buyers at a lower price level, maybe around 66, 50, 67 cents. So that's where the support is likely going to be. Now, if we take a look at the weekly pivot here, the support one is lined up at 67 cents. That's where we anticipate price to pull back to. So we could see that rejection happen at 68 cents, market pull back towards 67 cents, also where the 78.6% is located before pushing higher here towards the R2, and that's close to 127.2% at 69 cents for the Aussie USD. Next is the Euro USD. Now, Euro USD here, again, uh, no confirmation as of yet, but if you could take a look at the oscillator here, they're, they're current, currently considered to be severely overbought at this point in time. If we take a look at the movement on the Euro USD, we haven't seen a huge pause on the Euro USD. So uh, 1.12, that was the level that we talked about last week. In fact, we only talked about 
1.1150 up to 1.12 at kind of the limit on the euro usd this is currently testing 1.12 uh, if it fails at 1.12, then we anticipate a little bit of a pullback, at least back towards pivot. I don't anticipate a move back below uh, 1.11 at this point in time for the Euro USD. I think 1.1140, 1.1150 is enough to hold the, um, the Euro USD from sliding any further. So, but um, from the current price level, it looks a little bit exhausted. So uh, I'm not surprised if it fails at 1.12. It might do a little bit of a short-term correction towards 1.1150 before finding any buyers in the market. So again, weekly pivot is going to play a vital role for the movement on the market this week. All right. So for the year USD, we're anticipating that pullback a little bit towards 1.1150. And then that push higher here in terms of how far high we are likely going to retest June 2023 high. That's going to be at 1.1250, 1.1275. There's an order block up there for the Euro USD that could prove to be a stronger resistance. So we got two scenarios. Either we see that pullback towards pivot or price continues to break 1.12 but it's likely going to be limited or capped at 1.1250, 1.1275. That's with June 2023 high. And breaking above that level, you know, it opens up further movement on the Euro USD. Uh, it's pretty much in terms of how far it can go at this point in time. The Euro USD is uncapped. Should it go above 1.1275 on the daily time frame? Uh, on the Pan USD, we have we have already surpassed. The June 2023 high, that high was actually at 1.3150. Again, for the pound USD, this one here is in a much better position. Take a look at where the weekly pivot is currently located. <clears throat> weekly pivot is currently located at 1.3120. That's above 1.31. I don't expect the pound USD to drop back down below 1.31. Any bounces should happen at around the pivot level or above that 1.31 level. In terms of how far it can go, we're still projecting a move closer towards 1.33 on the pound usd and lastly we have the dodge app and a lot of interesting developments happening here let me explain a little bit in terms of the movement here so last week i think on the outlook i mentioned it's a very specific range which is 145 146 and the yen needs to break below 145 before any downside uh, movement is possible so we saw that bounces happen at 145 in fact 145 was tested three times last week before finally breaking on Friday on the back of that dovish comments coming up from JP um, from Jackson Hole. Um, but yeah, that 145 was tested three times before it breaks. Therefore, right now, we anticipate market to test 145 to confirm that as a resistance. So we're looking at a little bit of a pullback happening on the draw Japan. So don't be quite surprised on Monday or Tuesday if you see the USL strengthen a little bit. I think it was a little bit more of a technical correction from profit taking or position adjustment. But if we take a look at where the weekly pivot is currently located on the draw Japan, it is located in the, in the middle of 145, 146, exactly at 145, 47.5, right? About 145.50. So we anticipate a little bit of a retest of 145 up to 145.50, and we expect failures to happen around those levels. Should failures happen around those levels, then it is a strong indication that sellers are coming back into the market with that view where the FOMC is likely going to be more dovish and the Bank of Japan is going to be a little bit more on the hawkish side. And then that would actually confirm the end of the carry trade run on the Japanese yen. So 145, 145.50, a key level to watch out for. If we if it does break above 145.50, then we might see a little bit more of continued range by market condition on the dollar Japanese yen. But if there's a strong rejection at 145.50, 145, then that's a strong confirmation that a lot of traders are looking at the same thing. They're likely going to push the dollar yen lower in terms of how far it can go. We're currently projecting a move closer to 141 at this point in time for this week on the dollar Japanese yen. All right. So with that, good luck to trades. And I'll see you soon.